Okay, this section, um, this is section three of the science unit, heat and temperature. And we are looking at natural sources of thermal energy or natural sources of heat. And then we're going to look at uh, different technologies, types of technologies uh, that we can use to harness uh, solar energy. So we'll kind of focus a little bit on solar energy. Okay. So natural sources of heat. Um, there's four that we're going to look at. Not that that's the only one, those are the only ones, but those are kind of the main ones, I guess. Geothermal energy. Geothermal energy is energy that originates from inside the earth. Okay, so some obvious examples are an erupting volcano, an active geyser. But you know what? Just simply uh, proximity inside the earth can provide you with some heat. There's lots of um, homes that are being built now uh, that uses geothermal heating. That's where they have um, pipes. They're piping, uh, actually I don't even know what they're piping, but the, the piping, the plumbing, uh, it's water or oil or something, and it actually goes deep down in the earth, and as it goes down there, it gains heat energy, it's geothermal energy, and then it brings that heat back up, and then the, you can use that in your home to heat and whatever, okay? So geothermal energy, that uh, originates from inside the earth, okay? The next one is chemical energy. All right, so chemical energy, this is energy that is contained in materials, okay? And they have to go through a chemical reaction in order to uh, release that heat energy, okay? So some things that have energy in them, heat energy, that has to be released through a chemical reaction are fuels, any kind of fuel, like fuel in a vehicle, uh, kerosene fuel, um, what else, oil right? All of those are types of fuel. Wood is another one. We can burn wood. Well, wood's not very warm. If you cuddled a, a log, that certainly wouldn't make you warm. But if you, if we made it go through a chemical reaction, aka start it on fire, uh, get it going, right? It has all sorts of heat trapped inside of it, okay? And likewise with, with coal, that as well. And there's lots of other materials too that you could uh, potentially burn uh, those are kind of some main ones. Uh, the next thing is rotting or decay. Right? Our bodies, any living thing, even a blade of grass, right? they have heat inside of them. Right? So when uh, something dies, obviously there's lots of heat that is given off at that point. At that point. Um, but um, when it continues to rot, right? Um, as it's rotting and being broken down, right, decomposing, heat is continually being given off. That's why if any of you, have, if you've ever had a, a composting uh, set up at your home, in your garden, or wherever you have it, right, that a composting uh, bin actually can give off a fair amount of heat as that material inside is rotting. Because it's still, it's still, it's made up of particles, right? And as things break down, heat is released into the atmosphere. Okay. And then the last one, this is a no-brainer, solar energy. That's a huge source. That's our biggest source of heat, right? It's heat from the sun. Okay. Um, that's, I, we don't need to get into nuclear reactions or anything, but solar energy is the energy of the sun. Okay. And that's where, what we're going to focus on a little bit here. We're going to look at a couple of ways in which you can heat uh, using solar energy. One is, uh, I'll use a different color here, one is passive and one is active. So if you just think about those words for a, for a second, even look them up if you'd like. Um, something that's passive, well actually let's do the other one first, active. That one's a little more obvious. If you're active, what does that mean? It means you're running around, you're doing stuff, right? You're moving, okay? So that's what active means. Passive is the opposite. So passive is doing nothing. So active is doing, and passive is doing nothing, okay? That's what, a pass, that's what passive means. So when we're heating with the sun, sometimes we can do it passively and sometimes we can do it actively. 
So let's look at some examples of heating with the sun in a passive way. So uh, as far as just let's underline some stuff here. So if we're heating passive with a passive system, we are heating directly with the sun's rays. Okay. Um, so it can be done with insulation. So we pop some insulation in the walls and such, and it just sits there. It doesn't do anything. It just insulates. There's nothing active. So any, any um, solar energy that gets into the house, it's trapped there. Okay, so that's way, one way that we can passively um, uh, gain some benefit from solar energy. You could double pane your windows. Get windows that are double pane. Okay. And what this allows is, uh, it's kind of similar to the insulation. If it's double paned, then that prevents that solar energy that's gotten into your house from escaping. Okay, so we can capitalize on it. Here's another one. This is you know, one that I really like, positioning windows to face the sun. So here in Lethbridge, uh, we are, uh, you know, fairly north. And as the sun, during the day, as the sun goes across the sky from east to west, it's in a southerly position, right? It's more south. Sun doesn't, when it, it's at it's noon, right? It's at its, its highest point. It's not over top of us here in Lethbridge. It's way over south. Right? It's, it's closer to the horizon in the south. So if we, um, if we, in our homes, if we make it so our windows are facing the south, then that makes it more possible for the sun's rays to go through our windows and help to heat our home. See, we're not doing anything with any of these. We're just allowing those, the sun's rays, uh, we're just capitalizing on that, right? So we're not really doing anything. Um, and you can think of some other ways in which we can do that. Now, an active system, this is where it's doing something, right? It depends on a mechanical device to distribute the solar energy throughout the house efficiently. So not only is it is a mechanical device to distribute the solar energy, but also to acquire it. Here's where you're using things like uh, solar cells uh, and such to, um, to either heat a liquid or a gas, like air or of some sort and then um, that can in in turn heat something else okay um, so this diagram that I'm going to show you this is the URL for it <laughs> so it's not my diagram at all okay but um, take a peek so this is a very basic diagram um, yeah, I think I got it all there yep okay very basic diagram so up here here's your collector right Here's your collector. So the sun's rays are hitting that collector. You, what you have is you have a pump. And like I said, you could be pumping, right? You could be pumping air or a liquid of some sort through here. Now, as this, um, as this material comes through this portion where the solar cells are, it's going to heat up, heat up that liquid or that gas, and then it's going to come back down into this tank. Okay? And the tank can again i'm not going to go through all the mechanics mostly because i don't know them so it comes back into this tank and uh, we can pump that uh, that heat heated air or heated liquid through your house or through whatever it is that you're trying to heat and like let's say we're pumping it to to the taps right here okay to heat our water so it goes you heat your water and all that um and then we run out of heat, right? That heat was used to, to warm the water, and now it's cooled. And so it comes back here, cooled again, and then it goes back through the same process, right? And this pump, it's an active system, right? It's a machine. So it's continually moving this material in this circular pattern um, and uh, capitalizing on the solar energy. So we're using a mechanical device. So that's an active system, okay? So... Let's go back here. So four different ways in which there, uh, sorry, four different sources of natural thermal energy or natural heat, geothermal, chemical, rot or decay, and solar energy. In solar energy, when we're using solar energy, we can use it in a passive way or we can use it in an active way. 